Hey London Squad, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm sure telling from the title of the video, you know what we're going to be discussing about today. So today we're going to be talking about everything that has to do with the requirements where you have to prove your funds to get your Australian student visa. This has been a question on everyone's mind and this is like a big deal. Basically, I've gotten this thing from my YouTube, my little subscriber community and just checking from the comment and conversations we've been having in the comment section and in my DMs, I realized this is like a big thing on everyone's chest. But I've been planning this video for a while and I just thought, okay, maybe I should move it forward in my planner. So this video, I'm going to break it down into four different parts. The first part is going to be the idea behind the whole proof of form thing. Why did Australia come up with this thing? What was the reason behind it? The second one I'm going to be talking about is how to go about this process. That's what medium can you do it through. The third church section is going to be your genuine access of funds. That's when it comes to your sponsor, who is allowed to be your sponsor. And then the last part is going to be the two options which you have in carrying out this process. There are two major options and I'm going to be discussing them in this video. So if any of these things I've mentioned is going to answer one of your questions or all of your questions, please don't go anywhere and just hang around and I'll be back in a second. Okay, welcome back guys. Just as I said, I have four different parts in the video and I've been tackling the, the first part here. So what was the reason behind the whole proof of form thing? So this thing has been here for a while now, but I um, when it comes to study abroad over the years, they've experienced and I've also heard of stories even before I came to Australia when I was quite young. You know, there are these things that we call unforeseen circumstances. Okay, yes, you've provided that, okay, this person is my sponsor, but you never know what happened a year into, even few months into it. Some people have lost their parents. Instantly, they went abroad and they lost their parents. And so, Australia came up with this thing whereby, not just Australia, I think almost all countries must have come up with it. But this process is just to show them an account that has this money that you can prove and say okay yes indeed i have the money to cover my cost of living for a particular period i have the money to buy my flight ticket to and fro i have the money to pay my fees for this particular period of time and things like that just to show them that doesn't mean that those funds won't be touched you know but you're just proving to them that okay yes indeed i have these things and i'm suitable to come and study and i won't give you issues when it comes to paying my fees and yeah being very straight to the point i think that's one of the major reasons that's the only reason why you're meant to provide this thing before coming in and as we all know australians uh australian tuition and Austra and the cost of living here can be very awesome. high i'm just going to go into the second section so the second section of this video is going to be um how to go about this requirements that's what medium is as an acceptable form for proving your forms and so the first one is going to be uh, um, your bank statement or your bank certificate. So your sponsor can just go ahead to request the bank statement from, the, uh, from their banks and just submit it. That's acceptable. The second one is going to be your tax, tax form. So if you've been paying tax to the government, uh, you can provide that just to show because for you to pay tax is going to definitely show your annual income. So that could also be a medium for proofing your funds. The other one could also be a letter from your sponsor's employer. So let's say if your sponsor is working, let's say at IHVN. So if your if your employee if the employer of your parent whoever let me just say your sponsor is able to get a letter saying okay indeed i pay this social person by social name this amount of blah 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 and the person covers this position i don't know how the letter is going to be but something like that also there also was the option of pay slips so if you get pay slips you can also provide that as a proof of funds and um i saw one thing that had to do with loans the only reason why I'm not going to be speaking about that in this video is because I don't really understand the concept behind the whole thing. But I promise to come up with a video. Sorry, I have a call coming in. But I promise to come up with an updated video if I find my full questions. I don't want to bring information onto my platform that I don't really understand or 
get the full picture of it and so those are the options you have i'm sure your agents could provide better information and more in-depth information but yeah these are the ones that i was able to get from my research um the other thing i'm going to be talking about sorry if you see me looking down i just have a note that is guiding me so i don't miss out any point the third thing i'm going to be talking about now is your genuine access of funds and this what i'm talking what they mean from what they mean here is they don't want um this proof of fund to come in from just anyone so this has to do with who can be your sponsor and i got this question from vanessa just as i said and so when based on my research i'm going to give you two opinion i'm not opinion i'm going to give you the fact and i'm going to give you my opinion and so for my research what i found was it could either be your parents or your spouse so which i'm going to talk about my opinion now which i always felt it should be at least anyone in your immediate family and so vanessa's question to me was can my sister be my sponsor and my straight away answer was yes your sister could be can be a sponsor just because i felt oh she's your family your sister should be able to be your sponsor i'm not looking about probably they say younger sister or younger sibling sorry let me not say sister sorry sibling if they had said younger sibling i would have questioned it but there are still some younger siblings that make better money than their elder older siblings but let's not go into that but I always thought your sibling, if your siblings are financially able to, why can't they be like, for instance, let's say in the future, I get very settled and I get a lot of money. Uh, why I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be a sponsor for my younger sister. I don't know. That's just me. And based on this opinion also, I always thought it was more about if your sibling came into Australia, through this same student media you're coming into you could not you cannot use them as your sponsor if they also say that that would also make sense because it's like okay this student came in telling us that he's going to go back to his country he didn't go back he's here now and you are planning to come in through him on his phones and so if he came from that concept i would have said oh, okay that makes a little bit of sense but saying your sibling can i don't know so vanessa and who, any other person that has this question on their mind I'm going to do my do an in-depth I'm going to do an in-depth uh, research on this particular question I'm going to ask as many people as I can ask if I get an answer I'll definitely come back with an update on it but for now for my research what I saw is it could either be your parents or your spouse now let's go into the last part the last part is the main part of it or which people want to know and so for this part i'm going to be using my book a lot i'm going to be using my book a lot only because i have a lot of figures in here and so pardon me if i'm holding my book <laughs> but i'm not going to be i'm not going to read really everything from my book i just put like points in there so this part is talking about the two options which you have when it comes to carrying out this process and the two options from um my research was number one you have the option of proving your 12 month of living funds proving that you have those funds for the period of 12 months that is excluding your travel tickets excluding your um excluding your school fees excluding your spouse excluding your children and so this is where like this is the main part of this video and so the second part of this option was the annual proof of funds so this one is just a one-time thing it's not broken down into different costs here and there this is just pretty like they just put a fixed price just one huge price on it and say and said if your sponsor is able to prove that they can end this particular amount in a year you're good to go and so let's go into it from let's go into each of them in depth so i'm going to go into the first one which is a 12 months uh, proof of living and this one is aside i have to i'm going to use my book but i'm not going to use this one this is aside your your travel ticket so from what they broke down here they said approximately your travel ticket should be around 2000 aud so i'm going to make this video in 
using the standard i'm going to use the standard australian currency which is aud go ahead to do the conversion to whatever country you're in but from what they said your travel ticket approximately the price of the cost of approximately two thousand has been placed on that then when it comes to your cost of living the the uh, sorry not your cost of living when it comes to your fees and all those things the cost of approximately 21 let's say 21,100 has been placed on that that's in AUD then when it comes to your partner let's say if you have a spouse and you're trying to bring them in on your visa the cost of approximately 7,362 AUD has been placed on that when it comes to children for for to sorry when it comes to a child when it comes to a child the cost of about three thousand one hundred and fifty two AUD has been placed on that and that is for children below the age of five down and then when it comes to your children above the age of five years old the cost of approximately eight thousand and this one is per year has been placed on each child now i'm going to go in depth into all of these things and so um when they are talking sorry i'm just going in this video that's why it says to stand in the video so when it comes to your travel i know that that one is pretty accurate at least a maximum of let's say 3k 3k within the range of 2000 to 3000 aud you're meant to prove that so put that aside as i'm saying this just be writing the side you have that cost for travel then now you're going into your cost if you have a partner and the cost here i mentioned which is 7362 aud put that aside if you have a partner if you don't leave that out where if you have a child and your child is below the age of five years you have the cost of about 3152 aud put that there and that one is for each child so i don't okay there are some people that will probably have uh children at that age let's say if you have two that's for each child so 3152 for each for each child that you have then let's talk about your kids that are above the age of five that one the cost is different just because your children are also going to be schooling under you and so you have to prove that you have their fees for at least one year in Australia. And that cost is approximately 8,000 AUD for one child. So let's say if you had about three kids that are above the age of five, oh, you should just know that you should have times three of that money in your account for that part. So also just write that on one side. And so when it comes to your student cost of living, and this student cost of living covers both your tuition fee and everything. It covers your tuition fee, it covers your rent and every, like, they probably came up with a figure that will be able to cover you with your monthly uh, phone plan, everything you could think of your transportation. That is around, around approximately 21,041 AUD. So write that. If you add up everything, that is the cost, that's the amount you're meant to have in your account. And probably definitely because you're not in australia at the moment that's going to be in your own currency so if you're in ghana that's going to be in cities if you're in india that's going to be in rupees wherever you are if you're in nigeria that's going to be in naira so just convert all this money using the standard exchange rate and find out how much is meant to be your account under this option option one if you have any questions still just put it down in the comment section because there's a lot of information going out at once but now let's go into the option two. The option two is the option which I spoke about, which has to do with the evidence for your annual income. And so this one, they put a flat rate of 60,000 AUD. So if you're able to, if your sponsor is able to prove that annually, I get the direct deposit, that's my income deposit of about 60,000 that's not less than that it can be more than that but 60,000 AUD you're good to go but if you are going to come in on that student visa with any family members let's say your spouse or your kids it was moved up to 70,000 Australian dollar and so now the under this part generally not just under this part generally when it comes to this proof of form thing this thing Oh, this thing can come from 
both of your parents so because i say sponsor it doesn't mean that it has to be just one of your parents so if your dad and your mom are working you can combine their their bank statement or whatever their proof of fund and it's valid so you don't have to just say okay for this one i have to just use my dad or i have to just use my mom you can actually take the both of their um proof of funds and put it together and it's pretty much valid and so i don't think i missed out anything out of this video but if i did i can always make another video updating you guys on what i came up with i really hope this video was able to answer your questions when it comes to this proof of funds i really understand how it feels this money flying around it's a whole lot and I'm not just going to push it aside and say, oh, it's just proof of form. It's a whole lot to come with. But what I can promise you is what is being asked for is just an initial amount. When you come to Australia, life, like life in Australia is good. I can promise you that life will kick off. You really not even need anyone to depend on. So thank you so much. And I really love every single one of you. I have new people on board that have come. And yeah, guys, we finally hit 600 subscribers. Yay! <laughs> I'm very excited about it and I just want to welcome all my new subscribers. I really love all of you and have a great day. See you guys in my next video. Bye.